Admech have gorgeous models, are recently unnerfed, and have a great codex. It is reasonable to say that the army has a higher skill level requirement just to get out of the top performances, but that can be an exciting challenge anyway. The latest Meta Watch is saying that they're one of the worst factions in the game at the moment, but I can't really understand it. They have layers of overlapping buffs, great shooting, really mobile, and a deep codex. Let's have a look what they have to offer, which are the best units to play, and how good the secondaries are. So just some general comments about the faction. Characters are mostly for buffing. Holy Orders and Canticles are very powerful, so understanding their use can help get the most out of them. The Metallica Supplement and Skatari Army of Renown are now gone. A Marshal is an auto-take, but to be honest there are a few auto-takes in the Codex. They've got fantastic troop options, up to a 20-man blob, tons of buffs with loads of points decreases, it's even better. They make great use of deep striking, and most things now have a 5 plus emblem. The Codex is all about buffs and overlapping special rules, where many things can apply at the same time to a unit. Canticles of the Omnisire. Each battle round, choose a new army-wide buff, things like plus one arm save or five plus feel no pain. Doctrinary Imperatives. Each battle round, choose another army-wide buff, but this one also comes with a negative effect. So for example, plus one ballistic skill, and then you also get a minus one to your weapon skill. Holy Orders. Tech Priest Aura upgrades that give them a once per battle ability to reduce the CP of a strat, and then some special buffs that can be changed. Probably the best ones are Mage Eye for 30 points, so either a two plus advance or exploding sixes. Or Artisans for 35 points, allows fallback shoot and charge, or plus one strength for shooting. There are loads of great Warlord traits and some special ones by Forge World, like Riser having extra AP and melee. The best ones are actually those that buff a unit over a dated tether, so you can choose anywhere on the board. Some examples are shown here, but I think being able to perform an action and still shoot is great. With Relics, it's a similar story, and some great ones include the Omniscient Mask, Aura of Sixes to hit Explode, and an Exemplar's Eternity, a six inch aura of reroll hits and wounds of one. Now for some units and the standout HQs first. A Marshal, the best HQ they've got and now only 50 points. He has a reroll wounds of one aura anyway, and an obvious choice for the example as Eternity Warlord trait to make him a captain and a lieutenant. He allows a unit to ignore the negative part of the Doctrinary Imperative, and is a great buffing character for Skitari, which is one reason why they are much better than Cult Mechanica's units. The Techno Archaeologist, a cheap buffing character used to bring a Holy Order, as a 12 inch deep strike denial, which is great against demons and GSC and natively lets a unit do actions and still shoot. This is probably the best option that isn't a marshal. A quick mention that list dependent, both the Tet Priest Manipulus and Dominus are also good. Again, it's all about those overlapping buffs. And Mech have some great troop options. You've got the Vanguard, 20 man blobs. Their special strat is unnerfed, so they can get 80 shots from this squad. They're a great target for buffs and receive literally every buff available, so they can get up to AP minus three, strength five, more range, exploding hits. And since they can have a data tether, you can buff them anywhere on the board. They do have a cheeky little 3 inch pregame move, which is nice. 5 plus invuln, like everything else. And they can then actually trade damage and tank quite well. The Vanguard also have a really powerful strat 1 CP auto wound on 4s. This is crazy with a blob of 20 and can take out your opponent's best units just with a troop squad. A Manipulus could give extra 6 inch range. They can ignore cover for only a 5 point Omnispecs upgrade. You can run them in small units to support your melee threat as they dish out a minus 1 toughness aura. Some of the other units that are mobile and have sneaky tricks. Infiltrators. Great move blockers with forward deployments. Gives a threat of a turn one charge. And at least one unit seems essential. You don't get any rerolls against them within 12 inches. And they've got exploding fives and sixes in melee with a 1 CP strat. Rustalkers. Quick at 8 inch move and can ignore all penalties to move, advance and charge. They've got AP minus 3 melee with mortal wounds in addition. And in cover they go to a 2 plus armor save. And with that 5 plus invun they're going to be sticking around. And they also have a plus one attack strat, Cerberus Raiders. The Doggos, 12 inch move. They can do some damage themselves, but are fast annoying units. Tactica Oblique strat is great because it allows you to move away from a charge and taking at least one unit is a bit of an auto take. Iron Striders, an absolutely outstanding unit, regaining core, which is huge as they can get so many buffs. And this is one of the best anti-tank units in the game. You can get them doing actions and still shooting. And they've got reliable damage output being core and having Cognos Las Cannons with D3 plus three damage. They're also fast at 10 inches, resilient with a 5 plus invun, and people are basically spamming them. A quick look at the secondaries, and some of them are pretty good. Eradication of Flesh, a potentially better option than Grind, with a pretty reliable 4 VP for killing things with your Iron Striders. Accretion of Knowledge, kill characters and vehicles for 3 VP each. And this would be made a little bit easier by having vehicles counting for this, with only 8 rooms or more. Hidden Archaea Vault, hold a midfield objective that your opponent selects and get 5 VP. Potentially matchup and mission dependent, but just holding it for three times at the end of your turn could be pretty reliable points. You're a pretty impressive faction, and getting all those overlapping buffs to work together is quite complicated. I hope you have some fun with it, and I'll see you in soon. Bye.